Oh, all right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yanghuan Go, and I will be presenting our work on accelerating packet processing with GPU named APUNET. This is a work done with my colleagues, Asim, Yonggyun, Changho, and my advisor, Gyeongsu Park. So modern GPUs have been widely used to accelerate many compute and memory intensive applications. Applications benefit from GPUs hundreds to thousands of parallel processing cores and large memory bandwidth. Fortunately, many network applications nicely fit the execution mode of GPU. So while CPU processes one packet at a time, GPU would batch large number of packets and process them in parallel to accelerate the throughput. As a result, there have been many research works that show performance improvement of network applications using GPU over CPU. More recently, though, uh, researchers identified that the source of GPU benefits comes mainly from its fast hardware thread switching to high the memory access latency rather than its high computation power. What this means is that whenever a particular thread meets a memory I.O. instruction, the hardware scheduler inside GPU would quickly switch context to another thread to continue the execution, thus avoid memory I.O. blocking with background prefetch. And with this, they presented a framework named GOPT that simulates GPU's memory access hiding into CPU code. They showed that by reordering the CPU code with optimizations such as group prefetching and software pipelining, they can achieve comparable or even better performance over GPU for a number of network applications. So in light of these results, we ask ourselves the following questions. Can CPU code optimization be generalized to all network applications? And ultimately, uh, which processor is more beneficial in packet processing? In this work, we demystify each processor's effectiveness on packet processing algorithms. Our findings show that CPU optimization does benefit lightweight memory-bound workloads, but may not improve the performance if the workloads have large working sets. In contrast, we find that GPU is beneficial to both memory and compute-bound workloads, and the relative performance advantage of optimized CPU over GPU is mainly due to the DMA transfer overhead over PCI lanes rather than the lack of capacity of GPU itself. With these findings, we build a packet processing system with integrated GPU that avoids the DMA transfer overhead. We address the challenges in integrated GPU, such as GPU kernel setup and data synchronization overhead and memory contention. And finally, we build a number of uh, real-world network applications that outperform CPU-only approaches by up to four times. So in this talk, I will go through them one by one, but let me first give you a little background on GPU. So there are mainly two types of GPU, discrete and integrated GPU. Here's a picture of discrete GPU, which is a peripheral device that communicates with CPU via PCI lanes. Let me now change this into a simpler diagram. So discrete GPU has a number of supports for high performance packet processing. First, it has a high computation power with thousands of cores. Also, it has an independent high bandwidth GDDR memory, shared cache for fast instruction and data access, and a hardware scheduler with many registers to support quick context switches. Unfortunately, though, as CPU and discrete GPU maintain separate memory devices, data sharing requires a DMA transfer between the DRAM and GDDR memory, which we we'll later show as a potential bottleneck point. In contrast to discrete GPU, integrated GPU is placed into the same die as CPU and shares the DRAM together. In this work, we look at the integrated GPU platform from AMD named APU. Here's a simple diagram of APU. Overall, um, integrated GPU inherits the benefits seen by the discrete GPU. But the key advantage um, over discrete GPU is that integrated GPU can now directly access DRAM and eliminate the DMA transfer overhead altogether. In addition, Integrated GPU significantly lowers the power and cost, only consuming 35 watts with the price tag of $100 to $150. So we explained the properties of discrete and integrated GPUs. Let's now look at how these differences can be reflected in real-world network applications. For a fair comparison, we look at the processor-level cost effectiveness of packet processing algorithms in terms of 
performance per dollar value. So we choose this metric since it is difficult to compare only the performance when each platform has different hardware sophistication and cost. Uh, we carry out the cost efficiency analysis on eight popular memory or compute intensive packet processing algorithms as listed here. And we tested it on five different platforms. So CPU baseline, Geopt as optimized CPU, discrete GPU with and without DMA transfer, and integrate GPU. Below is the machine setup and price used for each platform. So we first look at the cost effectiveness of optimizing CPU code with Geopt. We first confirm that Geopt does improve the performance of memory intensive algorithms that consist mostly of memory IO instructions such as IPv6 table lookup and AO classic pattern matching. However, we find that applying optimization on computation heavy algorithms such as SHA2 has negligible effect on performance as now the computation capacity becomes the main bottleneck. On the other hand, we see discrete GPU with the DMA transfer successfully improve the performance thanks to its high computation power. Uh, and also we find similar results for other algorithms such as ChaCha, Poly, Shawon, and RSA. This demonstrates that there exist many network applications that exploit large computation power of GPU. And we have more detailed analysis of CPU-based optimization in the paper, so please check it out if you're interested. All right, next, we look at the cost effectiveness of discrete and integrated GPUs. First, we find that for memory intensive algorithms such as IPv4 table lookup, discrete GPU shows almost the same performance per dollar value as GEOP. So this is surprising since it means that implementing memory access hiding in software is enough to match the performance of GPU using a hardware thread scheduler. But additional analysis shows that it is not because of the lack of GPU capacity but the data transfer overhead over PCI lanes that causes GPU not to achieve its maximum performance. Here we see that discrete GPU without data transfer can outperform GOPT by three times. So, right? Then can we hide this DMA transfer time? Unfortunately, masking this DMA um, delay is challenging as it is difficult to completely overlap the data transfer time with the GPU kernel execution. As a result, this turns our attention to the integrated GPU, which completely removes the DMA transfer. Thanks to the shared memory and low price tag, we find that integrated GPU is the most cost-efficient processor out of all, outperforming both CPU-based optimization and discrete GPU without data transfer. And with these findings, we select integrated GPU to build a high-performance packet processor. All right, then are there any challenges in building an integrated GPU-based high-speed packet processor? Let's look at them one by one. First, we find that there exists an overhead of frequent GPU kernel setup. More specifically, um, as there is no longer a DMA transfer to overlap with the GPU kernel execution, frequent GPU kernel launch and teardown time um, becomes a dominant over overhead. Second, guaranteeing a cache currency between CPU and GPU results in high data synchronization overhead. So to reflect the change in data to shared DRAM, CPU and GPU need to carry out explicit synchronization, which turns out to be very expensive. And lastly, APU's sharing of DRAM incurs more contention on the memory controller and bus, which can potentially reduce the effective memory bandwidth for each processor. What is worse, the bandwidth of DRAM is typically an order of magnitude lower than discrete GPU's GDDR memory. To address these challenges, I will now present APUNet, a high-performance APU-accelerated packet processor. So here is the overall architecture of APUNet. We have the CPU and GPU sharing DRAM via a shared virtual memory, or SVM. As our solution to eliminating this Redundant, and redundant GPU kernel launch and teardown overhead, we have APUNet persistently run GPU threads without teardown. Then the question is, if threads do not tear down, how do they receive new packets and process them? 
So let me explain how this is done. First, workers at CPU carry out a packet I.O. to receive network packets and store them in a, into a shared packet memory pool that can be accessed by both CPU and GPU. Then a master, which is responsible for communicating with GPU, updates a shared pointer array that will contain the memory address of each packet payload and alert the GPU of newly arrived packets. Then each persistently running GPU threads access the packet payloads by using the memory addresses set in the shared pointer array and finally process the packets. All right, okay then. So once the packets are processed, how are the results now synchronized back to CPU? Here is a more simplified diagram of APNet. So one may think that um, once the GPU threads finish processing packets, the updated results will be written straight back to the shared virtual memory inside DRAM. But this is actually not true. Actually, GPU has a separate cache where the L2 cache is the global synchronization point for all running threads. So GPU threads use the memory barriers to synchronize updates with other threads, then only write back the result to DRAM when explicit synchronization happens, such as kernel teardown or atomics operation. Unfortunately, we no longer tear down the kernel and atomics is expensive since it requires additional operations such as memory fencing. And then one can argue, let's just use atomics operations on parallelly running threads to hide this overhead. This still doesn't work since atomics request is processed one at a time inside the graphics north bridge, which would serialize all the GPU threads beating the purpose of GPU parallelization altogether. So instead, we propose a group synchronization method which implicitly synchronizes group of packet memory region that GPU threads finished processing. The key idea is uh, to exploit the APU's LRU cache replacement policy. So let me explain how this is done. First, the GPU threads are now divided into multiple GPU thread groups with a size of, let's say, 32. So in the beginning, GPU threads stay idle. Now, when packets arrive, the master at CPU updates the state value of any idle GPU thread group with the number of packets to process. If there are no more packets, other groups' state values are set to zero. Since here, the master updated the state value for group one, the threads in group one begin processing packets. Now, when all threads are done, it is possible that the results still remain in the GPU's L2 cache. We then exploit other idle GPU thread groups to carry out a dummy memory operation on a separate memory block. So what this happens is this operation causes the previously cached packet processing results to be evicted from L2 cache and written back to the main memory. Finally, the master CPU would verify that the update is now visible in the CPU side and passes the results back to the workers. Um, for more details, as well as tuning and optimizations, please refer to our paper. Now, lastly, um, as our design shows, we rely heavily on the shared memory between CPU and GPU, which can suffer from memory contention. So we address this challenge by minimizing the contention with extensive zero-copy packet processing throughout NIC, CPU, and GPU. Here is a traditional way of GPU-accelerated packet processor. So we would normally have the NIC and CPU share memory space via a standard memory allocator, then copy the packet payload to discrete GPU's GDDR memory via PCI lanes. As we have shown with the cost efficiency analysis, this data transfer causes high overhead. Now, if we use um, APU's support for shared virtual memory, we can share the memory space between CPU and GPU. However, it is still difficult to extend it to NIC, such as Intel DPDK, since the code depends on a contiguous physical memory space, which is not supported by APU's shared memory allocator. As a result, a naive usage of SVM would still require copying. So as a solution, we updated the DPDK codes to integrate memory allocation by um, avoiding the physical mapping and registering a page-locked shared virtual memory allocated buffer 
to the packet memory pool. This enabled us to completely remove the copying throughout NIC, CPU, and GPU, which improved the performance by five times, as we will show in the uh, next in the evaluation. So to evaluate APUnet, we use a AMD Carrizo APU machine, as shown here. We use a separate client machine to generate packets or flows, depending on the experiments. And we have these machines directly connected via a 40 a dual port 40 gigabits Melanox card. For the evaluation, we answer the following questions. How well does APUnet reduce latency and improve throughputs? And how practical is APUnet in real world network applications? So in evaluating APUnet design, we use IPsec as our workload as it updates the entire packet payload. We first measure the improvement in packet processing latency when we apply zero copy packet processing and persistent GPU threads. So we show that for all packet sizes, zero copy significantly reduces the latency by 5.4 times. And moreover, removing the GPU kernel launch and teardown with persistent threads further reduces the latency by 1.5 times. And next, we look at how group synchronization improves the performance against Atomic's operation. So I show it for 64 byte packets here. So we clearly see that implicit synchronization is advantageous over serialized atomics, improving the throughput by 5.7 times. All right. We next determine the practicality of APNet in real-world network, network applications by comparing the, uh, with the throughputs of CPU baseline and GOPT in five applications. So in this talk, I will show just three of them, um, but you can check our paper for more details. Here are the results for IPsec gateways throughput for varying packet sizes and SSL proxies HTTP transactions per second for a varying number of concurrent connections. So we see that as demonstrated with the cost efficiency analysis, CPU based optimization fails to improve the CPU baseline performance. On the other hand, APUnet exploits the GPU's computation power to outperform the CPU approaches by 2 and 2.75 times. Next, uh, we ported SNORT-based network IDS to APUnet that uses AHO classic pattern matching. So one interesting finding that we saw is that unlike the previous claims, memory-intensive network IDS does not benefit from GOPT. The main cause of this is that when we implement a full network IDS, each packet processing has to go through a lot more number of data structures. And this means that more memory accesses to hide via prefetches, and which ultimately causes the um, eviction of not yet used cache data. On the other hand, APUnet's uh, high parallel operations um, improve the network IDS throughput by up to four times. Um, one notable thing is a DFC-based network IDS um, are performing the AC-based APUnet network ideas. So DFC is a work from NSDI last year that designs a new CPU-based uh, pattern matching algorithm, which uses cache-friendly data structures um, to significantly reduce the memory accesses. As we can see, um, using a different algorithm can have a very large impact on the performance. And we leave our GPU-based DFC implementation as our future work, but we hope it will further improve the performance of APUnet as well. So in conclusion, we have re-examined the efficacy of GPU-based packet processor. And through the cost efficiency analysis, we showed that discrete GPU's capacity is bottlenecked by PCIe data transfer overhead, and removing it makes the integrated GPU the most cost-effective processor. With this, we presented APUnet, an APU-accelerated network system that addresses challenges in integrated GPU with our persistence thread execution, group synchronization, and zero copy packet processing. And through the evaluation, uh, we saw that APUnet outperforms the CPU approaches by up to four times. And with these results, we believe that APUnet will serve as a high performance, cost effective platform for real world network applications. All right, thank you for listening, and I'd like to take any questions.
question over there. Yep. One so from NetApp. So nice work. So uh, you are using the AM this this new feature called AH, AH, HSA, right? Um, Heterogeneous. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. HSA, yes. So Intel Iris, there is no such option. That's why you just go for choose actually just AMD for implementation. Um, well, we didn't choose AMD. So we um, at the time of the experiment, we only had the platform from APU, um, AMD. So we just chose APU as our testing environment, right? But of course, if we were to have the platform from Intel, we can try the same um, design, and I think you have some good performance. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, uh, Mothi, ETH Zurich. Um, uh, really nice work. Um, but you. I notice you're, you're putting a lot of, you know, really quite careful architecture-specific optimizations in there, like you know, second guessing, second guessing the cache replacement protocol, things like that. Right, right. Um, GPU seem to be a really moving target right now, uh, and that every GPU design seems to be substantially different from the last one. Mm -hmm. Where is this going? I mean, is there a point where Maybe it's Knight's Landing or something where essentially this is just done on the CPU anyway, and the graphics done on the CPU is just a different looking CPU. I mean, what, what, what's your work going to look like in 10 years' time? Um, so, I mean, there have been a lot of works done with discrete GPUs to accelerate packet processing, right? But um, for integrated GPUs, I think it's still in the um, maturing stage. So, the machine that we use is actually for like embedded devices. So. There's still far away, far like away time to go for integrated GPUs. So I hope that if we can show that with this very embedded device like integrated GPU to show tens of like 10 gigabits performance with cost efficiency of you know, you know, only like 100 to 150 dollars, maybe AMD or Intel will get interested and then try to actually build integrated GPU for like server level uh, machines that could actually help more in the future of accelerating packet processing. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, time for one more question. Okay. Hi, uh, Jaiji from Yale University. So um, I'm pretty interested in, um, if, uh, uh, so the point in this project is you are using um, CPU area in, uh, to uh, change it to an uh, integrated GPU rather than the using uh, the area to more CPU cores. So I, I, I'm curious that if you are uh, claiming that you have four times acceleration, so what if I uh, switch this uh, integrated CPU, a uh, GPU area to uh, like four cores of CPU? So what is the benefit of AP, uh, integrated GPU versus CPU? Right, right. So um, I think the cost efficiency analysis could show better. Uh, so if you, oh, and also we have some additional analysis on CPU-based optimization. So for memory intensive applications, it may be um, very good for like adding just more CPUs. But as I, we have shown, if the um, workload is more compute bound, as in you have more computations instead of the memory instructions, and also if the memory instructions is really um, a lot, then it shows that using the CPU-only approaches and then hiding the memory accesses actually does not improve the performance of CPU based on that much, right? So in those um, workloads, I think using the integrated GPU will be the more right choice in improving the performance. Thank you. With that, uh, let's thank Yongwon, right. and maybe... Awesome.